tell God, you are good. Come on, wherever you are, in your home, in your cars, at work, tell him, God, you are good. Even though they call 2020 a, 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 a devastating year, we can celebrate because God is still good. In spite of everything, he's still good. So in that manner, we say, but God. Come on, can you say that, but God? But God. Come on, may not have had such a great year when you look at it economically, but God. May not have had a great year health-wise, but God. Come on. Friends walked out on me, but God. Why do we say but God? Because he has been our strength. He has been our hope. He has been our peace. He's been our joy.
right there. Stay right there. Reach. Oh God, oh, yeah, so that's glad what that does. God can reach down to me. Reach. Down, down to the in Lord. the valley, but God can reach down in the valley and lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
announcements. On call this week, Alpha Flock, Leotis Ford, Shirley Murray, Shirley Sangster, Alan and Denise Smith, Sledia Sweeney. Let us continue to pray for members who have had loved ones transition. Funeral service for Florence Jones, sister of Leola Griffin, will be held Tuesday, December 29th at 11 o'clock a.m. at the Evans and Browns Funeral Home. Visitation will be held tomorrow from 2 to 6 p.m. Funeral service for Nettie Pamplin, the aunt of Pastor Smith, will be held Wednesday, December 30th in Shreveport, Louisiana. Arrangements are incomplete for Michael Pamplin of Shreveport, the brother of Pastor Smith. A reminder to all leaders that the last leadership meeting of 2020 will be held tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Access information will be emailed Monday before the meeting. Your 2021 tithe and offering envelopes are now available. You may pick them up Monday through Wednesday, 9 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Please note, due to COVID-19 restrictions, you must call the office first before coming to the building. Let's be safe. On New Year's Eve at 6 o'clock p.m., you may watch live streaming of last year's watch night service on YouTube or Facebook. COVID-19 testing at Great Lakes Bay Health Centers is still being offered. The testing site has been temporarily moved to 1417 Cumberland across from the post office. The hours are 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m. Please bring your ID and insurance card. You can still be tested if you don't have insurance. A doctor's order is not required and there are no symptom requirements. Congratulations to our own sister Deborah Perry, who recently released a new song. The single, I'll Bless the Lord, is available on iTunes and Amazon Music. Just type in Deborah Perry and Majestic Praise and enjoy. Congratulations, Sister Perry. Congratulations to Dr. Dawn Hinton. Dr. Hinton is now Saginaw Valley State University's Director of the Center for Academic Innovation. Congratulations, Dr. Hinton. Need announcement updates, employment opportunity information, reminders, and or church calendar? Please visit our website at www.mtoimbc.org.
Happy birthday to those celebrating this week. LaBonda Gibson, Chantoria Minfield, Sharon Searles, Yolanda King, Lorenzo Pearson, Akiva Washington, Janet Pruitt, Betty Cheney, Lois Dell, Antoinette Ware, Shane Hamilton, Robert Holmes, Tracy Bates, Marcus Porter, Dennis Williams, and Ferriana Thompson. And happy anniversary, Orlando and Tina Straw, three years, and Charlie and Jeanette Clark, seven years. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? There is no rock, I know not ye. Amen.
I want it. You want it too. In the 1988 edition of Sports Illustrated, there was a story entitled Ali and His Entourage. Sports writer Gary Smith visited Ali's farmhouse to interview the three-time world champion. When Gary entered the space where the interview was to be hailed, there were photos and portraits all over the place. They were lined along the walls of the room. Ali, in each of those photographs, was pictured when he was at his prime. Body was ripped. He was dancing and punching the air. Hands held above his head in triumphant victory. And then they also had on one photo the thriller in Manila. But what Ali did next was amazing. It was incredible. He walked over to each one of the photos and turned them against the wall one by one. And then maybe to let out his ultimate despair, maybe it was to bring something that was deep within to a closure. He said something, he uttered something that was so low that Gary Smith had to ask him to repeat it. As he was looking out the countryside, as he was, think, as he was thinking about the pigeons who had made his gym their home, which was the reason why each of those photos were streaked with bird poop. He said these words, I had the world, but it was nothing. You want it, I want it. And Muhammad Ali wanted it too. It's a sense of fulfillment. But we have to be careful with what we fill ourselves with. You can Feel yourself with something and still be on E. And so how do we, how do we live a life of total fulfillment? One occasion, C.S. Lewis says, if I find myself desiring something that this world cannot satisfy, The explanation that comes to me is this, that I was made for another world. That phrase is true, but it often goes unheeded. We sometimes think, that what we want is a bigger house, better looks, more popularity, or the perfect family. We desire those things, we crave those things, thinking 
that if we just had a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that, then our lives will know total fulfillment. But the message today reminds us that what we want and what we need is the one that we were made for. And that is God and God alone. There is something about humanity, something within us that craves, that longs for more. And if we are not careful, we will long, we will long for, or we will crave for uh, that which God never intended providing us fulfillment. We see commercials who promise that if you just take this pill, you'll look like this. We see ads that say that if you had this much money, then you would be able to do this. And then sometimes we end up having expectations of other individuals that are not fair, no other human being can make you whole. No other human being can give you all that you want or need. It's fulfillment that we're after. But we're not the first to misplace our desires. Our world is surrounded by little G-O-Ds. And if we are not careful, we will fall into that trap as did the nation of Judah 700 years before the coming of the promised Messiah. There they were engaging in their ritual, religious worship of idols. And now the nation, the future of the nation, would hang in the balance they would have to choose if God was really God or was God just one of the gods. God using Isaiah as his mouthpiece boldly declared then and he boldly declares now that I and I alone are the one and true living God. And as such, because God and God alone is God, he demands that we place our confidence in him. and He demands that we recommit ourselves to him. Whatever empty spaces we have, whatever empty places we may have in our lives, God and God alone is the only someone who can fill those empty places. And only God can fill them because of who he is. God declares himself in Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6, 7, and 8, as the one true living God. And God alone is God for three facts, for three reasons. And because of these reasons, you and I can place our trust in him. You and I can place our confidence in him. And you and I can commit ourselves to living for him. These three facts are as following. First, his eternal pre-existence. Number two, his absolute knowledge. And number three, his unquestionable dependability. When we first take a look at his eternal preexistence, this reminds us that God is and was before all things, and God is and was after all things. He says in verse number six, 
Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. And here God is reminding his people then and even today, he is reminding us that there never has been a time since there has been time that he has not always existed. It is here why God declares his eternal pre-existence. That is to say, God is and was before the beginning. And God is and was after the end. Which means everything that has been created both animate and inanimate, owes its worship to God who is the creator. Without him making anything, nothing was made. It means that everything that has been created, it was created by God and God alone, which means he has creative rights. He has copyrights. Everything visible belongs to him. Everything invisible belongs to him. Everything above ground belongs to him. Everything in the ground belongs to him. Everything beneath the ground belongs to him because he is God the creator. He is Adonai. He is Lord, which means Everything has its beginning in God, and everything has its ending in God. God and God alone is the only someone who has no beginning, nor who has no ending. This is important because you have individuals like Ernest Hemingway, who wrote in his book in 1926, The Sun Also Rises, and he makes mention in that book this, this notion of cynical process. He argues that like the sun only sets and rises and rises and sets, humanity also goes in a kind of circular fashion. He, he says that basically uh, the sun simply uh, has a start, a beginning, and it has an end, it has a finish. But that is not the case because if that were true, then just like uh, the sun simply rises and sets, and that's its only function, our function would only be to rise in the morning and to lie down at night. Uh, it would be in a sense that just like the cosmos has no beginning and has no ending, that we too do not have a beginning and have an ending. But that's not true because God has fixed his purpose in that everything exists to give him glory. It is the reason why we read the word of God because the word of God reminds us that everything created, the animated and the inanimate has its beginning in God and it has its ending in God. Everything was created to give God glory. God has a desired outcome for everything that he has created. He has a specific purpose for everything that he has created. He has a reason for what he has created and how he has created it. Everything has a specific beginning and it has a purposeful ending in God. All we have to do is take a look at Genesis, which we know as the first book of the Bible, uh, that is, which was canonized, all we have to do is put that first book beside the last book, Revelation. All we have to do is put them side by side, and it will be confirmed that everything has both its beginning and its ending in God. 
Look at the book of Genesis. In Genesis, there are seas. In Revelation, there are no seas. In Genesis, there is the sun. In Revelation, there is no need for the sun. In Genesis, humanity was denied the tree of life. In Revelation, the tree of life leaves, provides healing for humanity. In the book of Genesis, Satan torments humanity. In the book of Revelation, Satan is tormented forever. Everything has its beginning and its ending in God. Everything has a starting point and everything has an ending point. Only God does not have a beginning, and only God does not have an ending. If God had an, a beginning and an ending, then you and I would only have a beginning and an ending, and we would be equal with God. But since God was before before, and since God is after after, he is sovereign, and everything has its starting point and its finishing point in God. It speaks of his eternal pre-existence. And that is why you and I cannot seek, cannot search for ultimate fulfillment in anything that was created. We should seek our fulfillment, our significance from the one who created everything. It speaks of his eternal pre-existence before all things. That is why he and he alone is God. And because he and he alone is God, only God can fill the empty places in our lives. Stuff and things last for a season. Stuff and things come and go, but God has promised that he will be with us until the end. Well, there was a second reason. There's a second reason that we should place our confidence in God and God alone. We should commit ourselves to him. We should see him as the only God. We have to be careful with what we do with our lack of fulfillment, our aches, our wounds, we have to be careful that we do not surrender ourselves to idols, that we do not commit ourselves to something or someone more than we submit and commit ourselves to the only one who deserves it. No one is like God, that is, his eternal pre-existence. Everything that was made was made by him. And it was made for him. But then Isaiah goes on and he says, yes, I am the first. And I am the last. I am not one of the first. I'm not one of the last. I am the first. And I am the last. Everything has its beginning and its Ending in me, which is why whenever you are overly frustrated, whenever you become anxious about your life, what is happening, remember the word of God where Paul gives us these words. He says, for I am convinced that he who began a work in you, he will finish it. He will complete it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he also reminds us that it is in him and by him and from him that we move, live, and have our being. That is, God is sovereignly in control of all things, all circumstances. Well, his, his, his eternal preexistence was and is before and after all things. But then now, God also declares through his servant Isaiah his absolute total knowledge 
above all things. He says in verse number seven, who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me since I appointed an ancient people. It's, it's interesting here because we all know somebody who wants to know everything about everything. There are literally some people who before they have their cup of coffee, they want to uh, read the horoscope for the day. And then there are people who are caught up with zodiac signs. In fact, that's how they introduce themselves. My name is Larry. I'm a, you know, and, and then there are people who they try to observe and critique personalities based upon zodiac signs. You got to watch those Sagittarius and, you know, Sagittarius, you don't, don't want to get with a Pisces and all of this type of stuff because, you know, they, you, you, you have people who are caught up with zodiac signs and they base their life's choices and decisions based upon horoscopes and zodiac signs. And then, are, are, are you familiar with fortune cookies? The fortune cookie industry is, is, a, is, a, is a $500 billion industry. Uh, there are people who, 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 who don't really love the food. They just love the fortune cookie. And, and they save these little uh, uh, pieces of paper and they even post them on walls and they have them in jars and containers and they base their life's choices and decision off of what somebody else said not understanding that the same person been writing fortune cookies got tired of writing them and so she started repeating the same one she had written years ago because she ran out of phrases ran out of sayings to utter but you have people who want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Listen, we don't have to know about tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. We don't have to know everything because if it looks all right with God, then it looks all right with us. God is not only with us in our today, God is also in our tomorrows. And so here, not only... Can God fill the empty places of our lives because of his eternal pre-existence? He was and is before all things. But secondly, because of his total, absolute knowledge of all things. Listen to what he says. He says again, who is like me? And, and he goes on and God gives us, he gives us, uh, words that you and I can stand upon. He gives us a sure foundation concerning knowledge. We don't have to have all the knowledge because we know the one who has all knowledge. And he says, God says, not only do I have total knowledge, he says, I can declare, number one, future things. G God says, let them declare what is to come. You see, people can make forecasts and predictions all day long, but only God and God alone really knows what the future holds. And, and that's, that's why, you know, when things are not going the way we really want them to go, when things are not necessarily happening the way we thought uh, uh, they uh, were to happen and should happen when we get a little anxious about our right now and we're concerned about the not yet it is good for us to thumb through the pages of scripture and the word of God will remind us that, that, that tomorrow ain't none of our business because if we knew about tomorrow we wouldn't be able to enjoy it today and I find comfort, I, I find consolation in occasionally uh, reading uh, Psalm 139. And Psalm 139, it, it brings about a sense of calm and ease. It is here what David says, Lord, you searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. 
You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is in my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before, and, and you lay your hand upon me. And David, David has to repent because he wanted to know more than he could handle. And so he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. And so David, he is humble now. He says, God, since you know everything, I don't have to know anything. It is here God, this God who has absolute, total knowledge of all things, and he says here, I can not only declare future things, he says, I can also declare former things. He says, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. God, he says, listen, there's no need for you to fear. There's no need for you to be afraid because I have told you from old and I declare it. You are my witnesses. God knew yesterday what would happen today. And he knew day before yesterday what would happen yesterday. He knows today what will happen tomorrow. We cannot recite history verbatim, but we know the one who wrote history. In fact, history is his story. He has written it all out. He is the executive producer. He is the producer. He is the author. He, he, he has Put it all together. And so here the writer Isaiah declares that no one is like our God. Whatever empty places or whatever empty spaces you have in your life, God can fulfill them. Because he and he alone, he and he alone is God. And we can place our confidence in him. We can commit ourselves to him. It is because of number one, his eternal pre existence before all things. Nothing was before God, everything came after God. His absolute total knowledge of all things. He declares future things, he declares former things things. It is what he would have to reassure Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you, I knew you. I'd already made plans for what I was going to do with you. So do not be afraid of what they may do to you. He declares the former things. He declares the future things. That is the reason why you and I, we don't have to have anybody to tell us our fortune. We don't have to have anybody to read our hands. We don't, we don't need any of that. We know somebody who knows everything, and he does not have to tell us what he knows because just long as he knows, it is good with us. But then he gives us this last fact about the one true living God. God, again, using the mouthpiece of Isaiah to declare these truths boldly. Then, and he does it now. It is God's unquestionable dependability. It is common knowledge uh, for those who would take water safety courses that whenever uh, you see a drowning individual, uh, you are never, as long as that person is trying to save themselves, you are to never attempt to save them. Uh, the person who is drowning automatically is reaching for anything and everything and whatever that person reaches for, that person will grab a hold to and that person will take that thing 
down with them. The exercise is to get within the reach of the person as if you can reach out and touch them, but do not be so close where they can reach out and touch you. It is common knowledge that you are to wait until that person is no longer depending upon themselves to save themselves. They, they come to an end of their strength. They come to an end of what they can do for themselves. And once they have stopped trying to save themselves, they are now ready to be saved. How many times have you and I not come to an end of ourselves? And we mess this up and we mess that up uh, only to discover that we were our biggest problem. But it was not until we came to an end of ourselves. It was not until we stopped depending on ourselves that we learned that we could depend on God. And here it is why Isaiah, he reminds us that you can always count on God. God says, listen, I will never leave you behind. I will never let you down. I will never look over you because I am the one true living God. That's what he means here when he declares himself. He says, is there a God? Is there a God beside me? No, there is no rock. I know not any. In essence, what God is saying, I am the only rock. That is to say, I, I am stable. If you want stability in your life, then you got to learn how to stop trusting yourself and learn how to trust me. Not only am I stability, he says, but I am also strength. He said, nothing can move me out of your life. Nothing can stop me from having my way with your life. He says, I am the rock. I provide stability. I am the rock. I provide strength. But I am the rock who also provides security. I am the one who can hide you in open view of your enemy. And your enemy can see you, but they can't touch you. I am the one who will hide you in the secret place I will hide you in the shadow of the secret place I, I, I can hide you I can keep you I can protect you because I and I alone am this rock and that becomes God's unquestionable dependability you can trust God you can count on God he'll never let you down here Isaiah, he declares that God and God alone is the only God who is worthy of our devotion, who is worthy of our commitment, who is worthy of our faithfulness. And that's why you and I, we have to be careful with how we feel our desire. How we fulfill our desires, our wants, and our needs. Because if we're not careful, we will fill them with the wrong something. And then we'll have to ask God to get rid of the something that we never should have fulfilled ourselves in the first place. And here he says, God and God alone is the only someone who can fill the empty places. Who can fill the empty spaces? Idol gods can't do it. How can we create something then expect the something that we gave life to to sustain our lives? But that is what this nation was doing. And again, there are times when you and I do the same thing. We put our trust. We put our faith in things that were created by God when we should only put our faith and our trust in the God who created and made all things. I'm not sure if you know this, but there is one thing throughout Scripture that is repeated over and over again. It is, it is constantly uttered. It, it is repeated from Genesis to Revelation. And, and, and it is that phrase, it is that statement, I am 
with you. When you look at all the events of scripture, all it was was God saying, I am. I am with you. You see, that rainbow for Noah was God saying, I am with you. That provision of manna for Israel, all that was was God saying, I am with you. The birth of Isaac to an old man named Abraham and an old woman named Sarah. The birth of Isaac, all there was was God saying to Abraham and Sarah, I am with you. The birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, calling him Emmanuel. All that was was God saying to us, I am with you. Have I got a witness here? And so no matter where we are in life, no matter what's happening to us, God is always saying, I am with you. Does not matter what season you're in. God says, I am with you. Have I got a witness here? It reminds us of the purpose of Calvary. Even the cross and an empty grave was God's sign to us. I am with you. Have I got a witness? He died, and he was buried. And when he died, and when they put him in a grave, Satan thought it was all over. The disciples, the disciples thought it was all over. They had forgotten what Jesus said. He said, if you destroy this temple, if you tear down this temple, in three days, I'll raise it again. Have I got a witness? He went on to say, nobody can take my life. I lay my life down. And if I lay my life down, I'll pick it up again. Have I got a witness? And so all through scripture, God is reminding us, nothing can stop me. Have I got a witness? Nothing can block me. Oh, praise his name. Nothing can come between me and my creation. Have I got a witness? Aren't you glad that when you think it's over, God says, I'm just getting started. Have I got a witness? He's always up to something. He's always being God. He's always working out his will. Have I got a witness? So that's why you and I can't get too desperate. That's why you and I can't become so anxious. Because God and God alone, God is God. Have I got a witness? God is so high, you can't get over him. I said he's so wide, can't get around him. He's so low that you can't go beneath him. That's why he's God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but because he's God, you ought to commit your life, commit your life to God. I don't know who's waving, you're waving in your face, but you ought to renew your confidence today. That's how God is saying. God said, I'm the only one who can feel the empty places. I wish I had a witness. I'm the only one who can feel the empty spaces. Have I got a witness? This might be my last time. I don't know, but let it be said that I said to you on the last Sunday of 2020, you can trust God. You can count on God. You can lean on God. Have I got a witness? 
I want to give you now the benediction now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before his presence of his glory have I got a witness to the only God can't nobody do me like Jesus he's the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord here it is be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time and now and forever amen you can close the book amen you can go to the bank amen you can sit down amen you can pull your arms amen you can go to sleep amen i know what i'm talking about have i got a witness i know that there's nobody i said oh, nobody like the lord how do you know because i searched all over couldn't find nobody i look high i look low i couldn't find nobody 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 greater greater than you well what will he do for you he'll fold you he'll hold you he'll rock you he'll soothe you he'll heal you he'll deliver you he'll set you free he'll give you life he'll give you joy he'll give you hope he'll give you victory i searched all over couldn't find nobody nobody greater nobody greater have i got a witness somebody ought to say yeah yes sir yes yes sir can be all things only God can do everything only God can provide whatever we need he and he alone can fill the empty places in our lives he knows what we need he is the creator of all things if it is not there, he can create it. He has all of life's answers. He is the answer himself. You can lean on him and he'll never give way. You can count on him. You can trust him. 
been through so much. You've had to endure for such a long time. But is there anybody in the room, anybody worshiping that they can declare that God is good, God is faithful, God is awesome, He's still blessing, He's still keeping us, He's still sustaining us. That's why we declare boldly before the world that God and God alone is their only God. Nothing but a God on your side can get you through these days. So we give you this opportunity to do what so many have done before and that is we open ourselves and he's filled all the vacancies, the void He's been everything we've needed. And so today, we issue to you this invitation that you might declare him as your God. And you might declare yourself as God and God alone. If you want to join this church, you can do it. If not this church, we'll be praying that God would order your steps to the church where he wants you to be a part of. But the most pressing issue of the moment, the hour, is have you given your life to God? Have you confessed your need for Him? You can do it right now. You ought to come on into the family. You ought to come on into the house. You ought to give God a yes. End the year, close out this last Sunday of the year. Having a relationship with God. We'll be praying for you. Be praying for your family as we approach the final days of 2020. A tumultuous year, challenging year. But here we are. God has kept us. We're praying for you. And we want you to pray for us. We want you to continue to worship with us. Bless the name of the Lord wherever you are. In spite of whatever you're going through, God bless you. Pray that you have a happy, prosperous, safe 2021.